Hi, welcome. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Heidi. It's great to be here. Um, this is me, and the digital innovation means that I will take those things in order. So please leave your phones on. If you want to send me a message, because I'm boring or I'm going on too long, I will probably answer Twitter first, and then the text on my cell phone, and you might get an email back within three weeks. That's the kind of the way that the technology has worked. I'm really delighted to be here. I'm a director and a writer and a filmmaker, and I've been working in the UK for a long time. And I had a great welcome when I arrived at Frankfurt yesterday. I thought you put this on specially for this conference, because I am a digital dog. And I want to say this is great welcome as I came through the gates at Frankfurt today. It is PricewaterhouseCoopers' new campaign, but it's around the shifts and what we understand this word to me. So, there's certain things around animals I want to share with you. We have an, an expression in the UK about the elephant in the room. Um, are you familiar with the elephant in the room? Well, I think the elephant isn't just in the room at the moment, it's actually standing on the edge of the cliff. And I want to sort of, we can't not mention the facts of where we are in the UK. And I think that's the little donkey we are at the UK at the moment in terms of facing that Brexit disaster that's suddenly happening. And I can't not mention and just apologise on behalf of the 48% of us who voted to stay with the EU because I've been making my work here for the last 20 years. And it's absolutely vital that we feel we can continue those conversations as artists and as creators and as makers. And I think digital has a great opportunity for us to continue those conversations. So I couldn't not mention the elephant, the Brexit elephant in the room. And we're all undergoing complete change and shift, but what we need to do is remember what binds us, and that's the human connections around stories and communication. Some of my work has involved large-scale productions. So here, this is Blood and Chocolate, it was about the First World War and our connections. We had big projection, we had audiences with headphones and actors with headphones, audiences of 300 walking through the city of York, sharing and animating building spaces. My version of Antigone, and we've used projection in our work for the last 20 years, and I work with a wonderful um, video designer from Germany called Arnhem Fries, who says that projection is just really lighting with better gobos. That's what it is. We're dealing with lighting. So we've taken those things and we've worked with those tools because it's exciting as a theatre maker to be creative and to work with the opportunities. I've also been fortunate enough to make a film for Universal Pictures, again shot on green screen, and we were able to put all the kind of different technologies within that and make it more theatrical and make it more about the storytelling, looking at what we had at our fingertips to help us tell the stories. And working in green screen is really interesting. This is our version of Antigone. We were able to capture the actors, and we were able to position their moving videos completely across the whole set and location of the design. They were talking to us. They were moving. And we were able to capture and create those ghosts. They were the ghosts of the past talking. So it helped us to underpin the narrative. I also want to talk to you about live streaming. We've been live streaming work uh, since 2008, and that means theatre on the internet. And I know that's a term that often is used as a sort of possibly one of the worst things that might be happening as a threat. I've heard it many times, and I've spoken at many conferences at U EU partnerships um, in my time, and theatre on the internet is what something I want to share with you today. But we've done things with multiple cameras and the cameras they use in the Olympics and allow audiences to get closer to the action and to see something that is different. It's not the same, it's different. I've been working in this medium now with VR and AR and also I'm devising a piece with Alexa and Siri who are now talking to each other. And we have this opportunity to think about the artificial intelligences of people with, who, with whom we are devising and what that means. But before I take you into this digital hole, I really want to share with you that you're in safe hands here and we're going to hold our hands together digitally. And I'm going to just say that I think everything's going to work out fine. And that's a cue for this. This is called, I think everything's going to work out fine. And does anybody know what, what this is or who this is by? This is by Raikuda. It's from Bop Till You Drop. 
And in 1979, it was the first album to ever be recorded digitally in ones and zeros, no analog valves. So my careful handling is that this digital stuff isn't as new as we'd like to pretend it is. So that was in 1979. And we've all had these. these. These, of course, came in 1982. We were putting this sound into our theater stuff then. These are CDs. We all remember those. And anybody know what these are? Anyone know what these are called? These are DMX cables. That stands for digital multiplexing. They came out in 1985, and they plug into our lighting desks. So we've been using that digital stuff for 32 years. So let's just all remember that some of the innovations that are happening have sort of been with us and we've been using them. So we don't need to use that term, which I hear so often as, I don't do digital. Because actually you have been, you are doing, and you will do. And I also want to talk to you about the fact that how I think we should lose that word and stop using the word digital. I'll come on to that. That tape, digital audio tape, they were brilliant. You could queue up your soundtracks. They were in the early 90s. So you can see we all remember our first smartphone as well. OK? This stuff has been shifting and moving. And then we had DVD. So all of these things, digital vertical discs, all of this word digital, I think it's a little bit like um, the term technology. Technology is only something we refer to if it was created after we were born. We don't put on the light switch and go, isn't that great electricity technology? It's just stuff. We don't, I don't put on my electric computer in the morning or my electric toaster. So I think in the same way that our word digital, we're going to stop using that because it becomes ubiquitous. It just becomes the things that we do. And what we should be having the conversation about is what it allows us to do and how it allows us to connect and communicate with our audiences. This is the internet. That's what the internet looks like in a series of connections. And we start to view our world in a completely different way. As you all know, Facebook is the second largest country in the world in terms of population of people who are using it. Our world has changed. So I'm going to come back to this theater on the internet business. It's already here. It's been happening, and it's been happening for quite some time. This started in 2009, and I'm sure you're all familiar with the live broadcasts into cinemas. So this genie is out of the bottle, and we're not going to go back into the analog world. So the questions we have to ask ourselves is how can we utilize the, stool, the tools and the work out there to enable us to reach and engage with our audiences? Now, this is something here. It'll soon be possible to distribute grand opera music from transmitters placed on the Metropolitan Opera House. We know it started in the New York Metropolitan Opera House. By a radio telephone station on the roof to almost any dwelling in greater New York. The same applies to large cities. This was in 1907. This is 110 years ago, okay? Let me just remind you that the actual behaviors of human behaviors and needs have stayed the same. It's the technology that has evolved. So here you can see people rather splendidly sitting there with their, what would have been the iPhones of their day, sitting listening to opera and the stuff in their club or in their homes. And that was in 1907. But it didn't start then. It started in 1881 in Paris. This is the theater phone. This was the most amazing thing. Because you can see, you could dial through and choose whether you wanted opera or classical music. And you could pay 10 minutes for one franc or five minutes for 50 cents. And these were on street corners. This was in 1895 in London. These things were there. You could choose to listen and engage remotely with a piece of live performance that was happening. There you go, in 1906, there were 14 theatres that were connected. And you could choose to listen to whatever you wanted, plus concerts and church services. This is 111 years ago. This idea of theatre on the internet or theatre being shared remotely is not a new concept 
just the method of delivery is. This is a photograph I found. This is from 1917, so it's 100 years ago. This is soldiers coming at, during the First World War. They're in, they're in field hospitals and hospitals across Europe, listening to concerts and live performance on their equivalent, rather splendid equivalent of Dr. Dre headphones. What stopped it? Well, radio killed the theater phone. And that was a song that Buggles didn't do because they did video kill the radio stars. But what that does tell us is that the technology evolved to allow people to experience the things they had already been experiencing. So the live transmissions went through onto radio and then onto television. This is something from a conference last week that we were involved in is that there is a speed of technology and there's a speed of versus the speed of the arts. And often we always feel we're playing catch-up. We always feel we're slightly behind the curve because things are always happening at a pace and they will continue to do so. I don't actually think we have any sort of special pleading, if you like, because imagine growing up and when suddenly air travel happened or talking pictures or the radio or the telephone. All of those would have been new technologies that people and generations would have had been moaning about and saying, I just can't get used to this. So what we have to recognize is that we've always been living through change. The speed of change, of course, it has been exponential, but that doesn't mean to say that we have to have any special requirements not to try and get on that bus or get on board. Theatre on the internet, we did a live stream from the Theatre Royal Stratford East, where I'm an associate artist in London. We did a live stream on 4K, which is twice HD. It's super ultra HD, as it's called. And that went into all the children's hospitals and children's hospices in East London, in between Christmas and New Year. We were able to take a room over. We had the projector and we had surround sound. And in this children's hospice where I was there, we were running the project, but I was there present in the hospice. And everyone knows what a hospice is. It's where children have, children's hospice is where children have life-limiting illness. <clears throat> so they were there with their families. They were there with their grandparents and their siblings and brothers and sisters. And the live performance came through from Stratford East into this room. And there was a moment where the actors, they looked down the lens and they said, we know that it's Hope's birthday today. And she was four and she was in the hospice. And the whole theatre sang happy birthday. So 600 people, plus all the cast, sang it remotely eight miles away. People in the room I was in sang happy birthday. And that four-year-old knew that something absolutely extraordinary was happening. And I caught the eye of her grandfather, who was there. He looked me straight in the eye, and he wiped a tear away, because he knew that she might not see a fifth birthday. But in that moment, we made a human connection. And that human connection is what this is about. So all of that talk about, oh, you know, it's not the same as being there and being in the same room as the actors. Well, let me tell you, that human moment when a digital transmission came into a shared space with other people absolutely worked. And that is what we need to focus on. And let's be clear, football has been doing this in pubs for 25 years. <laughs> you share the sorrow and joy across a bar with people you've never met before when your team scores or lets a goal in. So what we have to recognize is where do we put this stuff? Where do we place it? And the default position always has been we put it into cinemas, and cinemas actually, I think, are the wrong places because we don't have a chance to interact with our fellow viewers, participants. We have to think more creatively around how we make the transmission. And those shared moments, for me, I witnessed in December just gone, a transformative moment. So the idea is that this human behavior hasn't changed, but the method and the technological delivery has. And that grandfather wasn't having a digital moment. He wasn't thinking about the ones and zeros that were helping that to happen. It was, that was just the conduit. We were in that space. So it isn't about the technology. 
It's about what we can do with it. So when we talk to think about the word digital, this is my thing. I think we should stop using it. And it's my plea here today to think that we can phase this word out, but to replace it with the things it can do. And I've got an acronym for you which may be useful, and that acronym is ACCESS because it allows us to access and connect and communicate with people in different ways. So the first of the A's is to allow. Allow people to use it. Don't make it the domain of the digital department, and certainly, please, not only of the marketing department. This is actually about creating work and allowing all of your organizations and all of your teams to be part and parcel of creating this work. Because the C is create. Every time someone takes a photograph, leaves a message, sends them a voicemail, shares something, they're being creative. We want to encourage that in our teams. We want to encourage the fact that we can be creative and we can connect. So the first C is create. And the second C is capture. We are capturing this data for future generations. The future of archaeology is going to be digital. Just imagine if you could hear your great-grandfather's voice and hear his Spotify playlist and see what he looked like when he was your age or your grandmother when you were their age. Think of the data. Think of the stories we would uncover. It's going to be the artists, the creators, the theatre makers of the future who are going to make sense of this data. They're going to be able to tell better stories. So let's capture it, but also let's curate it and maybe have the right subtitles, the right translations, the right opportunities for it to reach as many people as you can. And that's about engaging. And in engaging, that means that we want to think about who we're talking to. If we think about some of our social media streams and our talk that we have on our channels, do we allow other voices onto there? Are they only ever written in our own language? Who do we think we're talking to? Who are we asking to be the voices of our organization? How are we able to open up our work to wider audiences across Europe and across borders and across boundaries? Because that's the way that digital can work. So we're thinking about widening that engagement, and that's what this digital exchange word can do. Seek. That means look for the people outside your organizations. Sometimes the smartest people we work with don't work in our organizations. Bring them in, connect with them. I've just done a remote um, conversation with a, with a training uh, partner of mine who works in Adelaide. She runs uh, the Museum of Discovery. She's been doing some training. I sought her out to enable us to work together. We work across poles apart. But you sometimes have to find those right people to help you to make those right engagements. And that means looking outside of our organizations. And as Dick Van Dyke said, we're about sharing. Because then we're going to share this work widely. So that's what this digital stuff can do. It's about access. It's about the things we create, capture, curate, engage, and share. Because ultimately, it's about people. It's not about the technology. There's someone else at the end of that camera who is looking at the feed. There's someone at the end of the message sending that's there that you're talking to and communicating. The same desires of us to share and connect and communicate is why we work in this industry. But we have to remember that we're thinking about the people first and not the technology. Think about the access and not the ones and zeros. I live in Cambridge. I'm very fortunate to live in Cambridge. This is King's Chapel. And this is the stained glass window on the, at the end there. Now, for me, I'm going to take this back even further. This was the multiplex and the internet of its day. It involved the highest quality of technology and innovation, the right color of glass. It contained narrative, story, people and place. And people would go there because the latest showing was to be seen. We have to think about the fact that it's around people engaging in public spaces with art and innovation has not changed. We just have to get better at placing it and increasing those conversations. 
And of course, the future is, does have the D word, and this is a projection onto York Minster of stained glass. And I always think that the kind of the organizations we work with are a little bit like stained glass windows. They're full of individual shapes and sizes and colors and of, of scale, but they all have to fit together to make the overall picture. And that's what making a good production or running a good organization is about. So we have to put all of those pieces in order and enable those people to help us tell the story. And when pieces of work happen, this is in Toronto, this is people's activity online about sharing all the work that's happening. So this is the activity of hotspots, of people posting photographs, Instagram, maybe Facebook, connecting, chattering. You can see the people where the hotspot is in the red area, where the main activity is. But people in the tower blocks are also getting a good, good view. We're redesigning and redrawing our cities through engagement. And as we've seen before, the animation of our public spaces and places through the digital tools can engage with those people who sometimes never step inside our organizations, much as we would, would try to tempt them with ticket offers. So maybe we think around turning things inside out and sharing our work digitally around those spaces and places and animating those. If it is about people, there's an initiative that's just started. We're developing the archive and the archaeology of the future. The National Theatre in London has just put all of its productions online and available for all schools. All young people have free, available access to this. And if we have to start somewhere, we have to think, what are we making and how are we helping it to make, shape and engage those future generations? Because that's how we're going to survive and that's how we're going to evolve. One of my favourite go-to animals is a starfish. The reason being that if you cut off a limb on the starfish, do you know what happens? It grows back. But do you know what happens to the bit that you cut off? it grows into a new starfish. I think <laughs> we need to be starfish to survive the coming events and help to shape the stories and the places and the spaces we're going to work in. We need to continue to have the dialogue continue to meet in places like this and to share our aspirations, our joys, our fears, and our hopes. And I put this slide on this morning after reading this morning's news. That's in my living room. It's by Shepherd Ferry. If you don't know his work, have a look. Thank you very much indeed. Mm -hmm.